and welcome to another episode of UBAR. In today's episode, we are going to talk about passing parameters from your code pipeline into your template of your application so you can only use one template to deploy your application. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started. <laughs> So this is my last episode for now. I have been talking a lot about deployment and CI CD in this channel. You can find a full playlist of this. I leave you the link in the card and in the description box. I have also talked a lot about environmental variables and passing parameters through so you can have infrastructure as code templates that they are agnostic to where they are deployed and they can be reutilized in multiple accounts and environments. I have shown you a lot of examples with serverless framework, but I never show you an example with some. So that's the idea today, to show you how you can use code pipeline to pass parameters to a SAM application. So let's go first to slides to refresh a little bit what is environmental variables and what we want to do and then let's go to the code and check this in action. So what are Lambda environmental variables? We have talked a lot about this when we were using serverless framework. Now I want to do the same with some. So if you don't know what Lambda environmental variables are, I use them a lot. They are key value pairs that you can dynamically pass to your function. You can get those in Node with process.m or in Python with os.environ. I don't use Python, so I think you should have seen my process.m around the projects. Also, these environmental variables can be encrypted with KMS, and I will not show you in this video how to do that, but we will uh, do it in a follow video. Just let me know if you're interested in that. And you can, uh, if you're using KMS, you can use different uh, roles to encrypt and decrypt the information, but as again, we are not going to do it. These are really useful for creating different uh, resources per stage, and I want to show you just that. So this is how our function looks. I will show you the code in a moment and we will pass the environmental variable there. In this case, we are passing the table name, but we could pass the environment or we could even use that uh, environment to create the table name. That's how you pass an environmental variable. Then also in the code pipeline, as we talked before, if you have not watched the code pipeline video, go and check it out. But in there, in the definition of the uh, action, the one that creates the chain set, you can pass a parameter there to be used in the sum. In here, we are just passing the name of the environment. So let's go to the code and check this in more detail with an example. So the first thing I want to show you is the code. We will go to the pipeline and in there I want to show you the um, stage and the action that creates the chain set. This one uh, is creating a chain set and is passing a parameter, my environment staging. So now whenever this is uh, being uploaded to the cloud in a cloud formation setup, it will override this parameter. If we go to my simple app in the template YAML, we will see here that we have the parameter my environment defined. We have a type that is a string, we have a default value that is dev, and then we have three allowed values, dev, staging, and production. And in this way, we are passing my environment and we are changing uh, from dev to staging. So if we go to our function definition that is here, we will see that we are passing the table name as an environmental variable. But the most interesting thing is that when we are creating the Dynamo table, we are creating one table per environment. In this case, we are going to use the environmental variable that we got from a code pipeline to find the right table name in a map. How that's done? That's done under the parameters. We have another 
um, a property here called mapping and we will define all the different resource names in this case depending on what is the environment if we have a dev we will have the name of the table to be my dynamodb table a slash dev for staging staging and for prod production so if we go back to the name we will see how this is created the table name will find in map in the resource name map using the environmental property that we get from code pipeline it can be staging or it can be prod it will get the table name and in that way we can have one template yaml to deploy to multiple environments so if we go to our aws console we can see here that in our stage we have the execute change state and this one if we open it, we will see the uh, CloudFormation stack that was created and we can see here the resources that were created and we can see that we have a DynamoDB table dash staging and in production, if we go to the same place but a different stack we will see in production in the resources that we have a dynamo table dash prod and if we go to dynamo we will see two tables prod and staging and for this we only use one pipeline where we were passing different attributes to the same template and this is extremely powerful like this you can do anything this was the video for today i hope you like it if you did give a big thumbs up and this is the last episode on this short series next week i will come with another thing as i said i'm open to hear your suggestions on what you want to hear next i always put polls in the community tab of this uh youtube channel where you can answer what you want like to hear and i'm reading them to create this content this was the most voted thing in the poll around here there are other videos for you to watch there is the latest upload and also the best youtube video in my channel for you according to youtube algorithm if you have not subscribed this is your chance go and click in the button in the middle to get subscribed and i see you next week with another episode of foobar bye bye